new leaderboard topper that has come up and that is called Open Orca Platypus 2, 13 billion parameter model. If you see this model, there is an interesting dynamics playing here where this model is a merge of two other popular models. It is a merge of Open Orca, which is uh, something that has been built based on the Orca paper and also the merge of Platypus 2. So Platypus 2 and Open Orca x Open Chat, these two models have been merged and that is how Open Orca Platypus 2 13 billion parameter model has been created. So what the creators of this model is claiming that is this model is more than the sum of its parts. That means rather than using these two models separately, this model offers you more than just simply adding them together. And uh, I'm quite surprised to see this practice coming into picture because uh, traditionally, whenever you have seen machine learning competitions, stacking and uh, model stacking and merging the models have been one of the most popular techniques all along. You mean uh, XGBoost came to picture because people didn't want to build one decision tree, but they wanted to have like a lot of booster trees. Then stacking came along, then ensemble models came along, even during the stable diffusion era. Even when we were using a lot of stable diffusion models, model merge was a very popular concept where people merged two different models and then got much better results in different aspects. Now I think like I, I've not seen at least in the uh, language model world this happening very frequently, but now I'm seeing that we have a concept of merging two models. Before I jump into the leaderboard score and all these things, I want to take a couple of seconds and then let you know what is happening in this merge actually. So if you see all these models, most of these models are all being trained using PEFT, P-E-F-T. So the PEFT is going to give you like the parameter efficient fine tuning option. So during you do PEFT, which is like, uh, you know, sometimes you do it with LoRa, so when you are doing PIFT, the PIFT library offers you a linear merge option. So what these models are doing is they are trying to fine tune the model and take the LoRa and then merge it with another model and then merge it with another model. And that's how they are getting the final merged model in itself. I'll definitely link this Platypus merging documentation in the YouTube description so you can go read um, yourself. And also you can see the code in itself, like how they are doing the merge. So you can see that there is a merge.py file. You can go and see how they are doing merge. So it, uh, of course, like I said, like it comes from PIFT and uh, it takes two models and then it merges it. So the point here is that the merge here is basically trying to combine these two models. So unlike taking a model's data set and then fine tuning the model, which is what previously people have been doing whenever a new data set, a new approach has been released. This approach is basically trying to merge two different models. So as you can see here, once you have completed a fine tuning, use merge.sh to merge the LoRa weights back into the base Llama model or the model of your choice for exporting into Hugging Face format. While we are experimenting better alternatives uh, to merge, our current merging process relies on the basic linear merge provided by PIFT. And you can see here all these merge related details. And they've also mentioned that we saw a 2% jump in accuracy for GPLATI and the data sets used to fine tune the aforementioned two LoRa based models that had lower similarity scores. So again, it is a very similar concept that we have seen in classical machine learning for a very long time that kind of ruled Kaggle altogether because ensemble models, especially models like XGBoost, which is based on booster trees, that builds a lot of trees and then try to compensate the error of one tree with another tree has been a very successful approach in classical machine learning and seems like that is kind of happening here. This is, I would like to also say that this is typically different from the MOE that we have all been speculating that OpenAI is doing. Anyways, I don't want to spend more time on the merge part, but this is honestly a very interesting approach. Going back to the model in itself, like I said, the model name is called Open Orca Platypus 2 13 billion parameter model. And uh, you can go ahead and then visualize the data set that they've used for the model. You can go ahead and then see what kind of questions that they've used the model. So this is available on nomic.ai who kind of popularized the GPT-4 all. And you can see what kind of topics they've got. So you know, like when you want to use this model, you know what is like this model is really good at and the density and what kind of things come closer. So you have like a good understanding about when do you want to use this model and uh, what kind of languages you want to use this model. So definitely check it out. It's quite uh, quite interesting and also quite nice too for you, for you to visualize it in kind of like 3D um, and see how it goes. So back to the model. So how is this model leaderboard to uh, topper? So it's a leaderboard topper because if you see the models that are available in Hugging Face, 
open source leaderboard performance again i'm quite not very confident to call these models open source let's call it open weight at this point i mean whenever i say open source in this channel especially related to ai llms i think what we mean is open weights not necessarily open source because these models come up with their own restrictions and then we still keep on calling them open source because it's not a permissible open source model anyways with the open weights model if you see open orca is just right next to the 70 billion parameter chat model from llama 2 now if you see this is a 13 billion parameter model and for any 13 billion parameter model or a model of similar size this is like way way above every other model that is available so the first one is 70 billion chat model from meta llama uh, sorry llama and the second one is the 65 billion parameter llama model so if you see technically this model is almost like crushing every other model with the similar score or with the similar size and if you see the scores um, the average score that they've got is 64 and that is from based on four different other benchmarks at different short levels in fact this model has almost consistently scored a really good score you can see 64.56 which is way above llama 2 um, this llama sorry llama 65 billion parameter model 62.88 that is like only next to the llama 65 billion parameter model once again, it has scored Hellas Wag 83. That is once again, only next to the Llama 65 model. And it has scored 59. That is again, once again, only next to Llama 65 billion parameter model in MMLU. And then in truthful QA, it has scored almost like literally almost next to the Llama 2 70 billion chart parameter model. So overall, uh, I mean, this is not the winner in this category. You can see wizard LM there, but overall, if you see this model, this model is performing really good across all the benchmarks that we could see and it has got an average of 64.56 which is just only next to Lama 2 70 billion chat model and this is coming from this um, group uh, called uh, AGI alignment I think AI alignment is a group name and they have also given you the prompt template and in terms of the model details in and itself if you see this model like I said it's a merge of two different models one, you've got the open orca open chat model and then you've got the platypus 2 model and um, it's it's an auto regressive model which can generate text the one model in this the platypus 2 13 billion parameter model does not come with a commercial license it comes with a non-commercial cc license creative commons license while open orca comes with the llama 2 commercial license which is what facebook released the model with and this is the prompt template and you have all the details for you to use it if you want to use it now they've got the demo in this uh, so you can go play with the model i already played with the model before making this video so typically i ask a question write a joke about elon musk and it made a joke honestly like i didn't like the joke much i would say like it didn't sound like a joke so it said elon musk the tech tycoon walked into the bar with his pet rocket and said hey bartender can you make me the strongest drink you've got i wanted to be faster than a tesla and more powerful than a falcon i don't know why falcon there maybe because of spacex rocket the bartender nodded and poured him a glass of water saying i'm sorry but your rocket ship is underage and you are not paying in dogecoin i mean yeah i mean it has got all the elements of elon musk but uh, it doesn't seem funny to me it, it just thinks it's a joke anyways then i picked up a question from the mmlu benchmark and it's a math question and it just simply says when you drop a ball from rest it accelerates downward and it has got this question and the answer that it gave me is more than 9.8 milliseconds square um, or meter sorry meter per square um, second square but it is a wrong answer the right answer is a so it didn't do well there was another question one of the it's a microeconomics question one of the reasons that the government discourages and regulates monopolies is that producer surplus is lost and consumer surplus is gained and a lot of options are there the right answer is d and then it correctly identified d so i was quite surprised to see that it did a good job here uh, honestly like these days i also have like a, an issue in relying on benchmarks all alone because a lot of these models seem to be um, fine-tuned or seem to be trained in such a way that, that they score good on benchmarks and um, that's why i always like to take this model in real world and try it out so i wanted to do a live test of this model and then ask a question like for example we can go say you are let's say you are a python developer um, create a next boost model with cross validation for uh, dogs and cats validation I, the prompt is not proper to be honest i just said um, um, dogs and 
cat's validation but it said classification so it kind of did its job so it's importing required libraries uh, it has got kfold which is required for the the cross validation and you've got this models and it's giving you all the details uh, the only issue probably you would face is because this is python it is indentation specific but i think the model can actually do it. it's it's a it's a pro problem with the format of how it has been outputted so it seems to do a decent job in terms of a, a simple python question let's go ahead and ask another question which is like a creative task you are a great poet uh, create a poem on why elon musk destroyed twitter on elon musk on how elon musk destroyed twitter and fired all employees send a message and um, you know typically these models that are like aligned with values they would not answer it properly but okay we have got the poem it says elon musk the tech titan bold uh, acquired twitter a platform so old he made changes some swift some slow and let go of some employees just so Firing employees with a swipe, making decisions that made some flip. Blue tickets for sale, oh the outcry. Tweets gone, yet he still takes the high road. Micro payments, verification fees. I'm quite surprised that it has got information about the verification fees because um, typically an older model would not have this information because Elon Musk had not acquired at that time and verification fees as a concept did not uh, was not there at that time. So this is another testament that these models I've got latest data. Uh, I don't know the date cutoff, but you can see that uh, verification fee as a concept has come in. So it means it has got data where Elon Musk acquired Twitter and then added this blue tick and uh, sub blue ticks for sale. So you can see this over oh, the outcry. Chaos ensured as Musk, Musk broke Twitter's knees, but the world kept spinning just like before as Elon Musk continued to open more doors. So Elon Musk, a revolutionary B, took on twitter like a boss you see changes abound some loved and some hated it at the end it's musk who is so elated and it says um yeah uh, as the dust settles the story unfolds a new twitter a old twitter which one holds only time will tell but one thing's for sure elon musk's made an impact that's much as for sure honestly it's a very impressive poem um the like like if i were a high school student I would definitely say this is a poem that would get me a uh, so the poem is really good so overall the point is i'm quite excited to see this model that it exists and uh, more than this model existing i'm quite excited to see this concept as merging these models exist because i remember way back like almost like six seven months back when stable diffusion as a lora concept started coming in people started doing crazy things with the uh, merging loras and i was quite excited and I could not remember such a such a thing happening in the language model space. And I'm very excited to see this coming up and say I'm quite interested to see how this is going to play out in the future. Given that now we have got Lora, you know, Pift is easy to fine tune and a lot of people are using even free collab to fine tune. Like we have got our own tutorials, how we can fine tune a Llama 2 model using Lora, Q Lora and a free Google collab notebook. And it seems like we are heading towards an exciting place. The only catch here is that I'm quite um, concerned about the way these models are being um, um, licensed these days. I mean, I don't necessarily use all these models for any commercial purpose. I'm like mostly making tutorials, helping people doing consulting. But uh, but I think like, yeah, there is a, going to be a really gray area in how these models could be used and uh, the kind of weird licenses that we are getting into where companies started using their own name with open source license. It's something that I mentioned before. Hugging Face has got their like own version of open source license. Llama 2 has Meta AI has got their own to own uh, low open source license. Stability AI has got their own license. I mean, with all these open companies trying to call themselves open source friendly and creating a known version of their open source license is quite pathetic to be honest but uh, let's see this is the world we live in let's see how this model performs if you take this model for a spin please let me know in the comment section see you in another video happy prompting